Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another amazing grocery haul. It's your favorite grocery haul host, Cup of TJ. Wow, I have really upgraded from traveling the world to traveling around my kitchen. Yay! So as promised, I am doing the Trader Joe pasta haul. It's been highly requested to review the pastas at Trader Joe's. I didn't realize how much pasta was at Trader Joe's. Like truly, there's so much pasta. It's not just a frozen section. There's like a whole giant ravioli shelf. So in this video, we're gonna sample some of the best items that are highly recommended and look around for some things that maybe are just like interesting flavors that we can try. Uh, I doubt we're gonna be able to review all of them in one video, so we're gonna do multiple parts. And if you're new here, welcome. Be sure to like and subscribe for more grocery hauls. We go to H Mart, we go to Costco, we go to Trader Joe's. Also, you guys, I, I'm gonna do uh, the H Mart part two, but I think it's been a few months since our last Costco haul. So I think there's new items now, so we should do a new Costco haul. All right, let's get started. Ding! Two items are really popular and highly rated from the frozen pasta section are these two. This pasta with the pink sauce, supposed to be really good in the cart you go. And of course, the classic one that everyone raves about, which I haven't even tried yet, so this is gonna be exciting. Cacio e Pepe. This is one of Trader Joe's highly rated pasta. Um, now this pasta literally means cheese and pepper. It is a dish from Rome and is usually made very simple. It's like cheese, pepper, and spaghetti. Um, the cheese they use is Romano cheese and according to this package, that is what they're using too. So it says spaghetti pasta in a rich creamy sauce with Romano cheese and black pepper. It should be very hard to get this wrong, but if done right, so delicious. One of my favorite things to order when I go to Italian restaurants here in the city. They're always so expensive though, even though it's just like cheese and pepper, but oh, what's a New York girl gonna do? Pay $30 for some cheese pepper pasta. You already know. Anyways, total cook time is about seven minutes and I'll show you what's inside. So there's these little pasta bundles inside and of course the iconic sauce bricks. Uh, they are in all of the Trader Joe pasta. Decent amount actually for the price. You could probably feed like two people with this. All right, let's dump it on a pan and cook it. Okay. It is ready. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. The texture of the pasta looks amazing and thick. You can see all the black pepper on there as if you just kind of like freshly grated them. Amazing. Okay, here we go. Let's take a bite. Oh my gosh, that is so good. What? Delicious. So creamy, so cheesy. You really taste all of that Romano cheese and the kick of the black pepper, just like dancing in your mouth. So it's like creamy and you know, spicy or the kick from the pepper, the chew of the pasta, great. Really, really good. It'd be nice to like eat this and then later you have a little bit of protein, maybe some fish and meat, but overall really, really good and flavorful. I probably can't finish the whole bag by myself, I think what I would do, and I do this with a lot of Trader Joe's stuff, is I usually just cook a little bit of it, and then I just like save the rest, so then you have more meals out of one bag. I can tell why they wanted to sell this sauce individually now, so you can just buy the creamy white sauce that they use for this in a little can now. Right, it's really, really good. I will say the black pepper taste, um, compared to when I eat it fresh at restaurants, the black pepper is a little bit more prominent. You know, whereas at the restaurant, it's very fresh, uh, a little bit lighter, but still, really good for just frozen pasta out of a bag. The cheese sauce tastes very fresh and good, like as if I just melted some cheese and it's all coating the pasta nicely. Lovely, lovely! Ta-da! Next up, this is another one of Trader Joe's highly rated pasta. It's the Fiocchetti pasta with pink sauce. Um, I believe some people pronounce it Fiocchetti as well, but I think it's Fiocchetti. Now, Fiocchetti pasta is a pouch-like pasta. It's usually filled with ricotta cheese and pear. This one is filled with three different types of cheeses, and they accompany it with a rich, creamy, tomato-based sauce. 
So a few ways to cook this, you can microwave this or you can just put it on the stovetop. So we're gonna do the stovetop way. You just heat for six to seven minutes. Easy. Oh, they're so cute. Oh my goodness, you know how I feel about little cute things. Look at this. Look how cute they are, you guys. They look like little money pouches. Harry Potter snitch, huh? These are all the sauce blocks right here, right? And it's just gonna melt. So to cook this pasta, you do need to add one tablespoon extra virgin olive oil and then a third cup of water. Here we go. And it is done. Now I think the third cup of water is a little bit too much. Like you probably didn't need all that water. At first I thought it was like too little, but um, definitely you don't need that much. But now the sauce is a little bit more reduced, so it's not too bad. Um, the pasta looks amazing. So here we go. I added a little bit of parmesan. Okay, here we go. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Mmm, the pasta al dente. I love it when there's a bit more chew. The cheese on the inside, it's great. It's not like overwhelming. Um, the sauce is amazing. It's very light um, yet creamy. Not too much of that tomato, like heavy tomato red sauce. It's very, very light and overall really pleasant. I love the little explosion of savoriness when you bite into it. It's, it's such a pleasant bite because it's not too much. Like the sauce, the cheese inside, all of it is not too much. It's actually quite light. I love this one. This one is delicious. Oh, wow. Sometimes some of these like, especially with like ravioli and stuff, it's a little bit too heavy, especially with all the cheesy filling. This is not so bad. I love the way it's like a mini pouch. I don't know, it's just so satisfying to bite. Love, love guys. No wonder this is a fan favorite. Oh my gosh, I can't. Stop eating this one, good. Y'all, there is a whole section, just gnocchis, look. Look at this, so this is a kale version. This is just, a, oh, a cauliflower version. This is a sweet potato version. This is a stuffed version with tomato sauce and mozzarella. And what is this one? Oh, and this one is, has mozzarella cheese, tomato sauce. Oh my gosh, there's so much options. So I actually looked online and they said that the sweet potato one was the best one. Obviously, I'm sure you guys have other favorites, but let's try this one and see what the hype is about. Okay, putting in my cart. Ding! Trader Joe's Gnocchi. So this is the sweet potato one with butter and sage. There's so many of them, like so many different flavors. So I think what we'll do is for this one, we're gonna put it on the stove top and then we'll grab another one next time and air fry it. But please let me know uh, your air fryer setting for it. So this one, this particular flavor is supposed to be the best one. Hmm. I mean, it looks really good. So this is the sweet potato version. This is made with sweet potatoes and wheat flour. Um, um, to cook it, again, two tablespoons of water, cook for three minutes over medium flame, cover, remove the lid, lower heat, stir gently for three or four minutes until the sauce and gnocchi are heated through. Gnocchi. <laughs> Before each pasta, I'll watch like a pronunciation video and try to get it right. But I apologize if, you know, if I, it doesn't sound exactly the same. I try, I really do. Hey. Ooh, it smells so... to look like this, guys. They look like little tater tots. They look like tater tots, they look amazing. Um, they're actually much bigger in size than I was expecting. I don't know why I thought they were gonna be like tinier bites. Uh, but yeah, this is amazing. This is an okay uh, amount. Like, I wouldn't say it's a lot, it's an okay amount, but of course, we'll cook it and see what it actually looks like. Since this one doesn't really have the sauce bricks, I'm just gonna cook half of it so I'm not like wasting food and I can finish it. I'm gonna do that. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, the gnocchis are done. 
I find that the cook time with pasta on the Trader Joe's instructions is always a little bit off. Like I often have to leave it on there for a little bit longer. For this one, I really wanted to get it to crisp up and leave it on the pan more, but I didn't want to overcook it. And also I think what we'll do is when we get like the cauliflower one, that's the one a lot of people like as well. We can air fry those and it'll be crispy. Um, with this one, I didn't realize that the sauce was actually stuck to the gnocchi, so as soon as it was heating up, it became all saucy, and now it's just kind of coating it. Look at that! It's just coating this little pasta! <laughs> also, you guys, the smell, amazing. Sweet potato heaven. Here we go. Oh. Oh. That, it just, it just melted away in my mouth. What, what is this sensation? Mmm, mini sweet potato pillow pastas. It just melted away and dissolved in my mouth. Like, it's so gentle. It's just boop, and then it went, it's like a cloud. Lots of amazing sweet potato flavor. The sauce is not overwhelming at all. It's very light buttery um, sauce. It's all about the texture of this pasta. It's very soft. You can tell that even when I try to cut it, it just kind of falls apart. I do bet if you crisp these up and you get a little bit of crunch with the softness, it'll be amazing. I'm not sure if it's possible with this one, but it tastes very, very good. Wow, I was not expecting that. That was yummy. Really just feels like you're biting into um, a sweet potato mixed in with a little bit of flour. It's just so there's enough to like hold it together. If you love sweet potato, I think you will really, really dig this. To me, even though it's savory, it's more on the sweet side. I'm more of like a savory pasta person, but this is not bad at all. I could see why people really like this, actually. <laughs> like, the texture is so surprising, it's so soft. Now I'm very curious to find out how the other ones taste like, especially the cauliflower one that everyone raves about. I feel like if you're somebody who likes to just snack and eat throughout the day, um, you could probably just split this bag into four portions or something and just make a few of them and just like eat them. I feel like I always have to say at least like maybe one thing that people should just be careful of. Um, if you like more of a chew on your, your pastas or you like more some kind of thickness, you know, to your bite, uh, you probably won't like those. So the raviolis, they actually have a bunch of raviolis in another section over there, we're gonna go check it out. But here, they have a fried ravioli, and they have one with ricotta and spinach. So I think I'm gonna try the fried one because texture-wise, it's like the most different from all the other pastas. Here we go. Breaded fried ravioli, ladies and gents. Now these look incredible. These look crispy. These look like the stuff inside is bursting out of the raviolis. And the best part, you guys, there's air frying instructions. Yes! They actually recommend this for crispy texture. You want to preheat air fryer for five minutes. You want to heat the ravioli for eight to 10 minutes um, and cool for one to two minutes. And I have no idea what's inside. All right, so let's open this up. So that's what they look like. Um, they look like giant Cheez-Its. Amazing. Uh, they're so, so, so much bigger than what I was expecting. They look much smaller on the package. You get a pretty decent size, like you get a couple. We're gonna do the same thing with this one and air fry just a few so that I don't like waste. I don't air fry everything and I have to eat it all. Um, so we'll do that and it smells really good. Okay guys, business idea. Candles that smell like pasta. You burn a candle and it smells like raviolis. How do we feel about that? Okay? Yeah, invest. Invest. Venmo me. <laughs> Just kidding. Gotta shake it halfway. I may have slightly over air fried them. I think I over air fried them. Just slightly. My raviolis look like they're about to explode but the ones on the package looks perfectly crispy. I'm still gonna eat it. Uh, honestly, it still looks really, really good, even though maybe it's just, just, just a little bit burned. The crisp on these are amazing. Uh, they really breaded them well. It doesn't smell as good as when it was frozen, which is weird. But let's bite into it. I think this will be best if you have like one of the sauce that you can dip it with. Um, Anyways, let's bite into it. Ready? Mmm. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, these are fire. 
These are great. Besides the fact that I kind of slightly over air fried them, um, the flavor is incredible. So savory. The filling inside, I was gonna complain that there's like no filling, but I feel like it's the perfect amount with the breading outside. It honestly reminds me of mozzarella sticks, but this is a ravioli. So verdict, super flavorful. Like, oh my gosh, I can imagine you um, hosting some kind of party. You have these out on the table. They would be gone in a minute. Pair it with some tomato sauce, uh, maybe some salsa even. Like, it would taste so good. Um, super easy to cook, just throw in the air fryer, obviously for less than I did. I did it for 400 for eight minutes as they recommended, but I think it only needed maybe six minutes, especially with the small amount that I was doing. If you're a pasta fan, obviously it's very nice to have another pasta in a different texture where it's much crispier and crunchier. Really good. I'm just gonna note some of these. It's like there's no filling. You know, it's like very, very little. But when you do get a piece where there is filling, it pairs really beautifully with the crust. Okay, so the type of cheese in here, uh, ricotta cheese, Monterey Jack cheese, and cheddar cheese. Okay, so I think it's a three cheese filling. Very flavorful, very good, easy to cook. A nice little refreshing texture difference from all the other chewy pastas. Nice. Good stuff, Cheddar Joe's. Let me tell you guys something though. I was reading this article. <laughs> I feel like we're gossiping. I was reading this article because I like to research like what are the top pasta. And one of the article was like the best noodles from Trader Joe's. The first one was the cacio e pepe. And I was like, all right, yeah, I get that. Like it's very, very good. Guess what they put for the second? The pho. They put the pho. They put the cacio e pepe as first and then they put the pho as second. Why you? This is all to say, do not believe everything you read on those internet articles, okay? All right, but believe everything you hear and say here on this YouTube video. <laughs> I saw another TikTok the other day that was like telling everyone to buy the Trader Joe's instant ramen, the one that tasted like absolute papakaka in my mouth. Yeah, so everyone has different preference, totally cool. Um, it's not good, the fuss not good, and the ramen's not good. Also you guys, I've been thinking about this, but you let me know if I should do this. I don't really rate things on here, like I'm not like, this is an eight out of 10, nine out of 10, because sometimes, you know, it's like, to me it's a nine out of 10, but to somebody it's like a four out of 10, or to me it's a three out of 10, to somebody it's 10 out of 10, so I don't really rate it, but if you guys think it'll help, let me know. But if you kind of just like talking about it and the pros and cons of each, like what we've been doing, then that's great, okay? If it's bad, I'll tell you it's bad. Okay, we're gonna pick up one of the risottos because it's a little different from the other things and it's mushroom. Anything mushroom, I love. Here it goes. <gasps> Ding! Mushroom risotto. Now, I love mushroom risotto. So, risotto's okay, but if it's mushroom risotto, another level, baby. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to try this one. Now this is another easy Trader Joe's pasta where you can just dump it onto the stove top for 67 minutes, or you can microwave it, but we'll put it on the stove top. Let's open it up. <laughs> Bruh, the doobie doo bop. What the? What? You're kidding. <laughs> Stop, you're kidding. Pasta bag making me look bad. Damn, I was trying to be all cool and stuff. Anyways. Okay, so um, there's still a ton here. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. I'm gonna be very careful. Uh, yeah, risotto and of course the classic <laughs> So I'm gonna prepare on the stove top and while that's preparing, I'm gonna clean this up. Don't worry guys, there's still so much left. So it was just like. <laughs> Best adult purchase, y'all. Sucks up everything, including spilled, Cherry Joe's frozen risotto. Not sponsored. <laughs> it's ready. <laughs> 
I will have to say, um, appearance wise, like texture wise, looking at it, it looks really good. It has way better texture than the risotto that we tried at Costco. So I'm really excited to dig into it. It smells amazing, like creamy mushroom goodness. So here we go. Mmm, mmm. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You can really taste the rice. The rice is very thick, has a wonderful chew. You can taste each grain of rice in your mouth, but I think some people, including me, like my risotto a little bit softer, where the rice is a little bit softer. But if you like your risotto where you can actually taste the grain of rice, then you're gonna really like that. Flavor-wise, great. It's like a creamy mushroom sauce, heavy on the mushroom flavor. You would just smell mushroom. Um, great seasoning. Overall, like, pretty good. I think it's not bad. I don't think it's like, whoa, amazing, oh, yes. Maybe it's because it's not really my preference to go for risotto when I go to an Italian restaurant. Nothing bad to say about it. It's mid. Not great. Pretty good. Not bad at all. Sometimes some of the dishes, it's just like, yeah, like, that's, that's risotto you get from a frozen bag. You know? Okay, so this is the mac and cheese section. There's so many versions. So this one is just regular mac and cheese. This is with roasted chili from New Mexico. Oh my goodness. Reduced guilt mac and cheese. Um, no thanks for today anyways. But look at this one, you guys. French onion mac and cheese with Swiss and cheddar cheeses, croutons and roasted onions. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Easy. Or for my friends who eat gluten-free, they also have a version there. So this whole four rolls for mac and cheese. This also looks so good. If we didn't get this one, I think we'd also get this one. Pepperoni pizza mac and cheese bowl. Doesn't that look amazing? All right, I always check their to-go meal section and here they actually have a meat lasagna. Huh? So we're gonna get one. That looks pretty interesting. I was gonna say good, but interesting now. All right, let's see if it's good. Bow bow, bow bow. So this is the French onion macaroni and cheese with Swiss and cheddar cheeses, croutons and roasted onions. Mmm. Delicious, looks amazing. They have a bunch of mac and cheese options. This one stuck out to me, although that pizza one looked really good. Now, to cook this one, um, you can microwave it for seven to eight minutes, or you can pop it into the oven for 45 to 50 minutes. 45 to 50 minutes? <laughs> when something takes that long, I'm like, oh, you know? But, you know, I bet it just tastes so much better when you pop it into the oven. Oh, okay, yeah, this is what I expected it to look like. It's just like this. All of the goodies, the cheese, the croutons, the mac and cheese, everything on top. So you're just gonna put this on a baking sheet. Along with that one, I'm gonna pop in this one. This is Italian style meat sauce, three cheese blend, and delicate pasta topped with mozzarella cheese and parsley. Amazing. Um, this is in their like ready to go meal section. I always check there because there's always little goodies there. Like last time we had the that burrito, the turkey burrito. Oh, mm, 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 mwah. All right, so this one to cook, uh, it's not as bad. You can microwave for five minutes or you can pop into the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna pop this in with this and hopefully we get to try this first and then this will be ready by the time we're done. Okay, the lasagna is done. Um, it looks so good. So I got a piece. You can see all of the layers there, all of the cheese and the pasta and the meat. So here we go. We're just gonna go ahead and take a bite. Mmm. Wow, that is really good. <laughs> Creamy, beautiful tomato sauce. So much cheesy goodness. Um, you can actually taste a layer of pasta. It's not like overly soft. Very delicious. Lots of flavor. What a good lasagna should be. And it was so easy to make. It's just like ready to go in a pouch. Yum. Wow, this is really <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's so decadent. Mm, that was delicious. Wow. You can taste the parsley. Really, really great cheese blend. Um, the pasta. It says delicate here, it is delicate, but there's still, you can like taste it. Really, really good. 
Immediately when I bit into it, I was like, this is some good meat sauce. The tomato um, sauce is very tomato-y, very strong, really, really good and so easy. I kind of feel like if you had actually microwaved this, it would taste just as good because the sauce and the filling, everything's delicious. So I'm actually going to pop it back into the oven and then feed um, the front desk in my apartment because uh, it's quite a lot of pasta, but really, really, really good. Mmm. Yum yum, delicious, delicious. Fifty long minutes later, this is also the part of the video where my stomach <laughs> starts to hurt from like the dairy and the cheese <laughs> and the carbs, and I'm like, oh my gosh. But it's okay, guys. After this one, I'm actually gonna take a break because I have an in-person audition which is very rare nowadays. Nowadays it's all self-tape, which means uh, you have to basically put yourself on video kind of like this. Uh, so to go in person is very, very rare, but it's very exciting. Uh, yeah, anyways, oh my gosh. Ah, yeah, I'm lactose intolerant, I must be. I don't know, yeah, I am. Oh yeah, that's painful. Okay, here we go, the mac and cheese. Uh, it smells amazing. It looks so amazing. I love the sound of like when you're mixing the mac and cheese and the cheese is like, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and take a bite. Here we go. Mmm, 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 wow. Oh, here we go. You know it's good when we start dancing. Oh, break it down now. Mm, mm, mm. Here's the verdict. This is one of those pastas where it immediately when you take a bite, you're like, this is so flavorful, flavor blast. You taste the French onion immediately. It's so strong. Right now, my entire breath, onion, just straight onion. Um, the cheese is great, savory flavor. The pasta is okay. Um, the macaroni, I kind of wish the macaroni was a little bit thicker or bigger, but it's not bad. It's just okay. The croutons add a nice crunch to the overall bite, which I really love, but the flavor is so good. But this is one of those pasta dishes where you just cannot eat so much of it. Like after maybe three, four, or five bites, I think I've had enough of it, like I can't. Whereas the one with the pink sauce, that one was so easy to eat, I felt like it was very light. This one feels very, very heavy. You must share this, it's not something um, I think you would want to eat like the whole thing by yourself. But you know what, no judgment if you do. If you're like, TJ, I'm gonna buy one of these, just eat it all by myself, do you. Do you. But yes, very heavy, but very, very flavorful. Um, the French onion flavor tastes so good with the mac and cheese. I think this is one of those combinations that's in a lot of like restaurant menus. So I can see why, because the flavor just pairs so beautifully together. So over here is their dry pasta option, cleared out, it's a pandemic but it's okay because over there, there's a couple of stops. Just so you guys can see, like, they have a bunch of different kinds of dry pasta. That's Torlini, mini ravioli. I actually heard very good things about this tricolor spaghetti. Uh, apparently it's newer, I guess. These are like the healthier pasta version, red lentil pasta. So really good for those of you who, you know, want to try different types of pasta. Over here is all of their pasta sauces. So we got some roasted garlic. We got some creamy tomato basil. We got three cheese, what is this? Chunky tomato and pepper, bolognese, and vodka sauce, pizza sauce, lemon, limon, alfredo sauce. I kinda wanna try this, the three cheese one. Doesn't that look so good? Y'all, you wouldn't believe this, but when I was researching, they said that the top Trader Joe pasta is actually their Hearts of Palm pasta. Supposedly always gets sold out. I think they restocked it here, but it's basically gluten-free, vegan, the green shaped right here. You can toss it with some veggies and stuff. There we go. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try one. It looks pretty good. Ding! Hearts of Palm Pasta. Now this, according to many articles, they said this was actually their most popular pasta, like it's always sold out, uh, which is really interesting because I think most people wouldn't expect that. It's gluten-free and vegan, so that is really, really nice. Three servings per container. Per serving is 20 calories, per container is six calories. So obviously like super healthy, great to have just in your pantry. I'm really curious, let's open this up. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna cook this and we're gonna try it with one of their sauces right here. 
This one right here, it looks really good. This is their three cheese sauce. Um, the only thing is, can I open it? <laughs> Oh my gosh! I'm gonna text my neighbors. Hello, are you home? Can't open pasta sauce. Oh, by the way, in case you don't know what um, heart of palm is, so I googled it. Heart of palm is a vegetable harvested from the inner core and growing bud of certain palm trees, most notably the coconut. Heart of palm is loaded with essential minerals, including potassium, copper, copper, and zinc. Uh, it helps regulate blood pressure. The next question is, why are hearts of palm so expensive? Hearts of palm have always been considered an expensive menu item. Some of the cost is due to shipping. However, the cost is due to the fact that in order to harvest the heart, the entire tree must be sacrificed. And then it goes, but hearts of palm are high in protein, fiber, vitamin C, and minerals. Uh, well, I will say the Trader Joe's one is pretty cheap. Yeah, pretty affordable, so. Maybe that's why it's always sold out because maybe it's more expensive at other places. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> wow, it looks really good, guys. It looks like egg noodles. Like I could throw this in a wonton soup, imagine. But look at that, it's just in a bag like this. How interesting. How do we cook this? We want to empty into saucepan, heat for five minutes and serve with your favorite sauce. So you don't even need any kind of oil, nothing. Not even hot water, you just throw it onto a saucepan. All right, here we go. Oh, my neighbors are here, please. Yes, I'm coming. Okay. Jan -jan! Hearts of Palm Pasta. It looks really good, right? Like, the texture looks amazing. Um, I've been really into alternative for things. Like, I've been eating a lot of cauliflower rice. It's a lot healthier, and I love cauliflower. When I see this, this looks really good to me. It looks like there's gonna be a nice crunch to it as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and try it. I tossed it in some of this sauce right here, the three cheese sauce. It smells so good. The pasta was incredibly easy to cook. You just throw it on the pan, and that was it and they heat up really fast. Okay, here we go. Mm, mm -hmm. It tastes exactly like how I thought it would taste. It is a bit more crunchy because it's hearts of palm. Um, it's kind of like when you eat cauliflower rice. Like when you're biting to cauliflower, it's a bit tough, but most of it in the inside is very soft. It's kind of like this. Also when I take a bigger bite of this, it reminds me of enoki mushroom because of the thread of crunchiness. Like you bite into enoki mushroom and there's like pieces of mushroom. It's kind of noodly. Um, yeah, really good. Also reminds me a lot of zucchini noodles. The crunch on these is a little bit better than zucchini noodles for me. It's a lot crunchier for sure. Overall, I think it's very good. Uh, yeah, it's very good, especially if you love like alternative thing or you just have a dietary restriction. This is really, really good. I think the thing with Trader Joe's is they always have good alternative um, and at an affordable price because I think in a lot of markets, maybe Hearts of Palm Pasta is a bit more expensive. You guys let me know. Literally, the ingredients list is so clean. The ingredients is just Hearts of Palm. There's nothing else, no like, if you look at all the other pastas, it was like paragraphs of ingredients here, it's just one ingredient, hearts of palm. Gonna pack this for dinner later. Okay, so usually the frozen pastas are over there, and then over here where all the fresh meat is, there's usually a section full of ravioli, tortellini, so we're gonna check out their option. Okay, so check out some of the flavor. This is their caprice, cheese tortellini. Um, this one we saw from the fall video, the butternut squash. This one looks super good, it's ricotta and lemon zest, roasted cauliflower and cheese. They have this one right here as well. Uh, since we're trying the pasta, we won't try this one, but look how cute. It seems like a hot seller, this one. They have arugula and parmigiano, more roasted cauliflower, goat cheese and sun-dried tomato. Oh, that sounds really good. Spinach tortellini, lobster ravioli. Looks a little sketchy, not gonna lie. All right, we're gonna go for the goat cheese and sun-dried tomato ravioli. Maybe we can get one of the Trader Joe's sauce and pair it with this and see. Here we go. Ding! Da da! Goat cheese and sun dried tomato ravioli. There are so many ravioli flavors. I, I couldn't 
I don't know which one to pick. So this is thin stuffed pasta with creamy goat cheese. You just boil them. You can toss them with butter, olive oil, or you can add to your favorite sauce and serve. I'm going to add this with a little bit of that tomato sauce that we already opened and see how it tastes like. It looks really, really good. So here it is. Ravioli, we love a fresh pasta moment. By the way guys, if you don't want to cook these right away, you can actually freeze these. So it says right here, they have a freeze-by date. So there you go. Our raviolis are done. Okay, all right, all right. Super easy to cook. Um, I tossed it into some of my sauce, but you can easily just toss it with some butter, okay, and olive oil. Add a little bit of basil for that freshness. And here we go! Goat cheese and sun-dried tomatoes. Mmm. 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 I'm sorry. That one is a no from me. <laughs> Goat cheese is so strong and it tastes so sour. It was just like pungent, you know? And I mean, of course, like goat cheese is like that, but you think like they would adjust the amount or something in the ravioli? Oh, if you don't like goat cheese or you think you like goat cheese, but not in a large amount, then you will hate these. I gotta find someone who likes goat cheese to give this to. I don't know if I can eat another one. I might eat another one for y'all. Maybe if I cover it with more sauce, I can cover some of that. Here we go. Okay. Pasta texture, great. I'm sure all the raviolis have that same texture, very great. When you bite into it, you're kind of like, oh, it's kind of cheesy, it's kind of crumbly, okay. And then the sourness of the goat cheese starts to attack you at the tail end of the bite. And then the next thing comes is like pungent, sour, rotten type of goat cheesy taste that just like lingers on your tongue. And that is the last thing you taste from your bite. And that is what is not okay. I don't even taste, where's the sun-dried tomato in this? Cause all I taste is goat cheese. I should have known, I don't know why, when I think of goat cheese, it sounds so pleasant. Like, you know what it is? I'm thinking about goat cheese on a charcuterie board, charcuterie board, where like you're eating some salami, you know, eating some prosciutto and some crackers, and there's goat cheese there, and you're like, mm, you know what, I actually do like goat cheese. But in this ravioli, mm -mm. For a quick second, I was like, is this expired? You know, with the Trader Joe's haul, at least one item just has to be off, right? Yeah. Okay, that's so, I wouldn't recommend that one. <laughs> All right, ladies and gents, so there we go. That was part one of the Trader Joe pasta haul. What do you guys think? I thought a lot of the items were very good, very convenient, very affordable. Definitely can see why Trader Joe's pasta are so popular. The ravioli. <laughs> I don't know, I still have like a little bit of goat cheese taste in my mouth. I will get rid of that. But besides those, a lot of the items I really, really love. I love the pink sauce. I love the breaded ravioli. That was delicious. So lots and lots of good items. Obviously we only picked a few from the frozen section. So we're gonna have to go back. Let me know two things in the comments. Number one, if you are a frequent Trader Joe shopper, let me know which pasta is your favorite so that we can try it next time. Um, also let me know why Trader Joe never have the hash browns anymore and why is there a national shortage of Trader Joe's hash brown. And then the second question for those of you who maybe don't go to Trader Joe's as often, just which of the items that we tried today would you love to try? And that's it for today. <laughs> now my stomach's gonna digest all of that pasta. Good luck to me. Give this video a Big fat thumbs up. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. See you guys next time. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends to like and subscribe as well. And also your mom and dads.
probably wouldn't let your kids watch my channel. At least like not not all the videos. Or do. <laughs> I might be a good role model. I'm gonna cut the video. I'm sorry, I'm gonna end this now. Yeah, we'll just see so I just don't wanna leave. I love you guys so much. <laughs>